Remember, remember the first of December, the car heated treason and flame. I see no reason the seat covers in there should ever smell the same. So, this morning my uh, old car heater had uh, fallen over, was lying upside down, the fan had not turned, the motor had caught flames and it smelled very bad until the fuse broke and turned everything off, leaving me with a cold car smelling of burnt motor. So today after work I picked this thing up, this is a Defa uh, Termini 2 1200 watt uh, heater, brand new, absolutely brand new, 50 euros worth and I figured we'd take this thing apart because uh, unlike my old car heater which was hardly interesting, just an AC motor and a PTC heater, this thing seems to have some brains to it and it caught my eye uh, in the store, when I just did that, you can see the fan is a permanent magnet motor. And uh, when I proceeded to plug it in, it became very, very obvious uh, that this is no ordinary AC motor, but rather that sounds a lot like uh, a brushless DC motor, much like a computer fan. And uh, then I looked further on the packet and they're bragging about it being some smartphone-y thing. It says control with defa link. So this thing's got to have some brains to it and it's going to have a power supply inside. So I figured we'd take it apart and uh, have a look inside just to see what we're actually getting for our money. Uh, I'm not going to be pretending that this is a review, I'm just curious to uh, see what's inside, especially since we don't seem to have any uh, warranty void sticker on this thing. So I could be doing this cough free. They do ship it with a five year warranty, which is nice. And it seems to be held together with three uh, T10 screws and one snap around the back. Uh, Texas, Defa AS. NSB in Norway, type 430058, 1200 watts at minus 25 degrees C, 230 volts AC, 50 hertz. And then it says uh, cabin heater in a myriad of different languages. Does it say where it's made? Manufacturer, Defa Technology, Wuxi Company Limited, number 11, Xikun Road. WND Wuxi, Jiangsu, China, 214028. Importer, Defa AS, N3540, Nist Bien, Norway. So it's made in China, like all the rest. Oh, actually, that's, that's just a little mounting bracket. I haven't taken that off. Perhaps there's another screw or a warranty void sticker underneath. Come on, how's this work? I do believe you should do that and there we go. Come on, no warranty void sticks. Nope. Well that does present us with the underside of a fan. And yeah, those wires are not going to be carrying more than 12 volts, that's for certain. And there's the little clip. And we should be inside. And uh, no sneaky stickers. And we have ourselves a little power supply. Uh, do we have any brains? Well, let's have a closer look at that. And here is the PCB in all its glory. And it does not take long to figure out that there are no brains in this whatsoever. So the smartphone thing is going to be referring to some entire system thing they offer. So that's quite misleading. Not it's a feature that I will miss, but for the average consumer, it might be a letdown. Uh, either way, as far as pay supplies go, I quite like this one. Uh, we have a, a top 258 a little integrated switchy thing. Uh, I've seen these in various products. They seem to be quite well made little chips. Uh, and above all, we have a quality primary side capacitor, 400 volt, 22 microfarad. Uh, Chemicon KXG. 
Now, I haven't checked the data sheet for the particular series, but uh, it's a Chemicon, it's gonna last long enough. Uh, the secondary side is not as impressive with the Lelon branded caps all around. Uh, but all in all, that's a nice looking power supply. Granted, it's only a single layer PCB. So we might be suffering some solder joint failures uh, in the long term, but they do offer five years warranty, so you'd think they uh, counted on that. Uh, isolation distance looks very good. This is definitely going to be a legal, nice, safe power supply. Transformer is going to be fine. They've even got their own little logo on that, so it's not even something they've shipped out to some random Asian manufacturer. Hopefully. Uh, they have done a decent job tacking everything down as well. There's plenty of yellow gunk. I'm hoping it's not the stuff which goes conductive. I don't think it is. Uh, but even so, it's not real attacked onto too many component legs. It's mostly just holding everything mechanically in place. And you know, if I manhandle this one, uh, this wire's moving around, but that's just a bit of magnet wire. It feels like one solid lump so that's very good it's not gonna it's not gonna fail easily from just mechanical vibration they've tacked everything down just fine exactly like I how I'd like to see it in the paste part like this really uh, the fan connects to these two pins the labeled V plus and S G and D I disconnected it in order to get it out the input wires are soldered in and that's pretty much it I'm uh, not going to really do any reverse engineering on this. It's going to be a 5 or 12 volt power supply. Oh, we could just look at the output caps here. They're 16 volt rated. So I'd wager this is a 12 volt power supply. Uh, else we'd be using 10 volt caps to save some dough. So if nothing else, this could be a nice little power supply. <laughs> for for another project if something else and the heater fails, which is likely to be the fan in the long run. So, thumbs up on the PCB. I like it. I'm not even going to modify it prior to use. And we do have a little fuse and plenty of mains filtering. We've got a little bridge rectifier sitting underneath the primary cap van. From there on, it's just going to be proprietary for the particular switching chip. So, that's a real nice attention to detail. They could probably have omitted most of that. Uh, but they chose not to. Very nice. So let's uh, have a look at the uh, actual circuitry of a heater. So for the main circuitry we have our mains coming in. The blue lead is going straight to the heater. This is going to be a PTC heater. Nothing too fancy. Rather compact though. Probably of reasonable quality. And from there it's just going straight over to the power supply. Nothing to it. Uh, the other side is going first through this uh, uh, thermal fuse, which is rated 84 degrees C. And then it's going through this uh, thermostat, uh, which is uh, rated for, I believe, 60 degrees C. So at 60, this cuts out. If, it gets, oh, if this fails and we get more than 80 degrees back here, the thermal fuse will cut out. So they've got dual layers of protection there. Quite nice indeed. And following the thermostat, it just goes straight to the heater and the power. So when the heater cuts out, uh, you also get the fan cutting out. So the fan is not going to be spinning and shuffling, uh, shuffling the air around if the, if the temperature of the vehicle gets over 60 degrees. But yeah, that's a minor issue. So what about the fan? I'm not going to start ripping that apart too much because... I'd rather not risk breaking it. What do the lay bearings sound like? To my ears they sound like a sleeve bearing, so this is gonna be this is gonna be a pretty generic of a rather large uh, brushless DC twelve volt ish fan. Nothing really exciting going on. It doesn't look to be of super high quality I'd rather have heard ball bearings so it, if you get one of these it's probably a good idea to mount it vertically in order to not put too much load on the end bearings because they tend not to last in these cheap brushless fans they last a lot longer if you have them sitting vertically 
because that's what they're usually made for, which does make the ad on the packet a bit misleading because they've mounted it horizontally, which is going to wear the fan out faster. Oh well, that's going to depend more on the vehicle than anything else. So that's about it, I guess. Gonna put this back together, see if it still works, measure its power consumption, back in a moment. Oh, something I'm not too enthusiastic about is these crimps, because it seems as if they've actually tinned the wire. Yeah, they have tinned the wire, and then crimped it. And that tends to not last for too long, since tin is so soft, it tends to want to move out of the way, so... It might be a good idea to solder these in the future, but eh, I'm going to leave it in five years once the warranty runs out. Alright, this is the part where it goes bang and I have a cold car tomorrow as well, but here it goes. So we're getting uh, quite low power actually. 900 watts and a nice toasty outlet temperature of 72 degrees. Uh, 900 watts is quite far from the rated 1200 but uh, they do specify that at minus 25C so uh, that's a bit disappointing in a way. You would expect that to imply you know a normally operating warm heater. 900 watts is a significant step down from my old heater which did 1500 but I'll just bump the time up for a while doesn't make too much of a difference so there you go that's a very quick tear down I'll look inside the Defa Termini 2 1200 watt uh, car heater seems to be a quite well built device I'm pleasantly surprised especially by the fact that they uh, have opted to use a Japanese primary side capacitor. I was very surprised to see that. So I'm gonna go eat main to that so I don't have to freeze, freeze tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Cheerio. And as a final note, they do provide you with this rather handy little drill template for you to uh, easily drill holes in your car without having to drill through the holes of your actual plastic mounting plate. That's a nice touch. I appreciate it. Thumbs up for that. Mm, that's not gonna work. No chance. Oh well.